Hey folks, so like it or not, mirrorless cameras are making a huge surge in the market. More and more people are shooting with them, but for those of us who are coming from DSLRs to mirrorless, the ability to use your existing lenses on the new cameras is a big plus. Today I'm gonna to look at the three adapters that'll let you have autofocus and VR and metering using your Nikon F-mount lenses onto Sony mirrorless cameras. Hey folks, I'm actually planning to give away one of these adapters, so make sure you're following along on Instagram and Facebook, turn on notifications, and you can sign up to my mailing list at mattgranger.com. So two and a half years ago, I got the first Comlite prototype, which was the first one on the market that would do Nikon to Sony. And I was Did honest, like it? it was a prototype but it was worthless. It didn't get a single shot in focus and you have to be honest, I couldn't recommend it to anyone, but I made it clear it was a prototype and not what was going to ship. Still, they didn't speak to me for two years and then out of the blue, I heard from them again. It's now up to version six software and they offered to send one out. So I thought, let's do it. Let's see how far it's come in two and a half years and see if it's actually a viable option now. So I've got the A7R Mark II. I'm getting the A9 in today to do some testing with. Do you wanna grab that lens up from there? We're going to use the 85 mil 1.4G, the 200 mil F2, just to see if they really have the, the enough power to transfer to drive a beast like this, and the perennial 24 to 70, which I know a lot of people own to see. Now, Rather than just do one, I thought I would get in three of the leading adapters and compare them and see which one is best. First off is the Comlite version six. Second, I got the Velo, which is, I'm pretty sure it's a B&H's house brand. Mm -hmm. And then I got the Photodiox Pro Fusion Mark II. So that's the three. Now, I don't want to name drop, but a little birdie told me that for whatever reason, there's only really one company making the internals for this, that the re reverse engineering Nikon lenses is really tricky, mm -hmm. which is why they don't work as well and it's taken a lot longer to come out with adapters. And they said all of the adapters on the market are the same parts inside. Oh. So if that's true, we would on one hand maybe expect the performance would be the same, but so often I've seen the same parts put into different application by different people with different software and you get different results. So one, I will compare them and actually see is the performance different. But other than that, we'll be looking at how's the build quality differences, how's the finishing. And another thing you wanna think about is how's the after sale service going to be? I can't compare that. But here we've got Comlite, who I don't think have an office in America, are a Chinese brand. They're all made in China. I'm not saying being Chinese is something that is dicey. b and assuming that is where you would go for service, are uh, in New York and easy to contact. Mm -hmm. And Photodiox are uh, also an American-based company with offices and contact numbers and service and support here. The other thing is $400, $400, $350. Hmm. So let's see if the performance bears out or if there is an obvious front runner here. Now, something that immediately strikes me is the boxes are exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's more than the internal components that are the same. The boxes are even the same. What? Okay, spoiler alert. As we opened up and had a look at the Comlite, I found the build quality was just fine. But as we opened it up and compared it to the Velo adapter, we found they're exactly the same product. The cutout, the packaging, the plastic bag it was in, the desiccant container, the caps it had, everything was exactly the same, just the way the places that it had printing on it was different. Interesting that the Comlite is the only one that doesn't mention that it's made in China. As we opened up the Photodiox Pro one, we found it's the same too, just that it has gold front and rear uh, pieces and an orange button. And for some reason, the front cap has a shiny interior rather than a matte interior like the other two. But looking across the three of them, they appear to be exactly the same adapter. We discovered that over 10 minutes, so I thought I'd compress that down for you. So jumping ahead, we put on the 85mm Bardis onto the A7R Mark II and had Steph stop playing with the Cat Tyson for a moment. Do a little benchmark to see how long it takes to focus. No problem in the lighting and the setup that we had. 
and then we ran through each one of the different adapters. First, the Comlite, then the Photodiex Pro, and then the Velo. And I have to say, all of them performed fine and completely usable in this scenario. Three, two, one. Yeah, I would say the performance of all three is exactly the same. Big surprise. Okay, folks, so now we're outdoors. Thanks to B&H Photo for sending out a brand new A9 for us to do this testing with. I've got the Comlite attached to my 200 F2, and now we're gonna run through and try each of the different adapters, see if they can focus via the A9 to the 200 F2. We'll also do the 24 to 70, and see if this trend of them being actually useful like we found on the A7R2 continues. Tin down. Okay, there I've got the point right, 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 right on her eye. Let's go to closest focus and see how it does at bringing her back. A back, a fourth, a back, and then nailed it, and it got it. So not super fast, but for a non-moving subject like this, not too bad from furthest focus. This is the Comlite adapter. Ooh, a lot less certain from furthest focus, but it does still get it, and let's just check the shot. Beautifully, beautifully sharp and in focus. Closest focus, photo deox. Okay, I would say that is slower than the Comlite, but it got it, and let's check it. Yeah, beautiful. Let's go to furthest focus. Yeah, definitely on this one slower. I didn't notice any difference on them when I was shooting in studio. Like, God damn, isn't that, there's a reason they call, I call this the God of lenses. You're ridiculous, look at that. One. Uh, a quick thing and then a slow little hunt. Not ideal. It's going to get there, but I would say slowest. The Velo isn't getting it. What can I say? Although I don't know that this lens is actually officially certified for all these adapters, so let's try the 70 to 200 in its place. Okay, so on the eye, com light, round two, closest focus. Let's do it. That was, I'm impressed with how fast that was. Let's do it from furthest focus. Yeah, that's working. Yep, that's gonna be on her eye from closest focus. Okay, so they just seem to work better with the 70 to 200. The photo dikes again, completely usable. So testing out the 70 to 200, note this is the latest E variant. I found they all performed really well and overall I would say the Velo performed the best. It was actually really impressive just how well it did perform, but the other two were doing just fine as well. I also then went ahead and used the 24 to 70, the original F2.8, not the VR version, and the 50mm F1.8 G. And both of them, again, were eminently usable. Not a whole lot of variation between the three, but I would say with those two more common lenses, actually, it was the Photodiox Pro that did the best. If you wanna get involved and win the Velo Adapter, folks, make sure you're following along on Facebook and Instagram, turn on notifications and get involved with the post. It's a great performer, but seeing I need it for my 200 F2, it's not the right one for me. Okay folks, so I'm summarizing down several hours worth of playing with them to give you my summary. But I can say, I'm really happy to say that after two and a bit years of a hiatus of testing adapters, they've come a long way. When I first tested the original Comlite, it really was useless. I didn't get a single shot in focus. It was a complete disaster. This is a completely different ball game. I still maintain that hardware wise, these are exactly the same adapter. And being that the case, you might think, okay, then let's just look at price and who I think I'm gonna get the best after sales service from. I think they're two important criteria anyway, but it's not as simple as that. 
because the firmware makes a difference. And for whatever reason, I got different results using the same conditions, the same cameras, not moving anything. We still got different results. The Velo couldn't focus the 200 F2. I didn't get it to do a shot in focus at all, whereas the other two got a reasonable result. With the 85mm F 1.4G, all three of them performed equally well and in that studio situation were just fine. For whatever reason, the Velo seemed to do best on the 70 to 200 and fine on everything else except for the 200 F2. I would say overall, probably the Comlight was the most consistent performer, but then the Photodiox Pro was the fastest with the 24 to 70 and the 50. So how do we interpret all of that? Well, with the Comlight and the Velo both being $400 and the Photodiox Pro being 350, that's a big point in its direction. You have to think about your history with the brands and who you trust and who you wanna put your stock in. I have no reason to distrust any of them. And the performance, I have to say, in this kind of shooting, except for the instance with the 200 F2 and the Velo, I think was usable. And what I mean by that, no, you're not going to get native performance using the 70 to 200 on one of my Nikon cameras or a Sony 70 to 200 on the Sony camera, you will get faster results. And if you're relying on it for really fast focus and tracking and that kind of thing, then I think you're still going to want to go for native lenses. But in those situations that I was in where you're shooting a subject that's pretty much staying still, they were all usable. Even the eye tracking and the face tracking, it was all working, it was detecting it and keeping with them. And I'm really impressed. I really thought the conclusion of this video was going to be wait a few more years, the technology is not there yet. But all three of them are doing quite well. So thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Check out each of the different products in the description below. You can see links straight through to them. They're at version six for a couple of these already, so no doubt there'll be even more coming. And check when you get yours that the firmware is all up to date because that is obviously having a big impact on the final results we're getting. Hope you found that useful. Leave me your thoughts. See you soon.